Welcome to Wrestling, and today we are going to talk about wrestling and the week, wrestling and this week. It's been a while since we've done an episode like this. You know, Justin and I, we do these topic shows over and over again, and it's nice sometimes for us just to unwind and bullshit, you know, about news and whatever else comes to mind. So this episode is going to be one of those. Uh, we we're recording on a Sunday because, you know, it, we had stuff going on this weekend. And so we might go a little shorter tonight. But, you know, the reason we're recording on Sunday is because Justin had to go and see the Mets play. Justin, why yes, the Mets? I, I, long story short, my uncle um, made me a Mets fan when I was a kid. So we went down to Anaheim to see them play the Angels on Friday. And yeah. uh, it was fun. Had a good time. Haven't seen them play in a couple years. So... Um, How'd they yeah, do? Got the kids. They won seven to three. How many so, Mets fans were out there? Probably an okay good amount. amount, decent amount. Yeah, there's always a decent amount. And you know that they were playing the Dodgers, uh, you know, earlier in the week. But when I was looking at the price of tickets and stuff, it was so much cheaper to go down to Anaheim. Really? How much? We're talking more? about about half the price, a third of the price. What? The and Dodgers are that down, marquee baseball event, though. Like the Dodgers. No, this, this is this is a Dodger Lakers town for sure. Um, and just the comparisons. I mean, Dodger Stadium also is a nicer stadium for sure. Um, but as my wife's explaining it, and I was actually listening to some of the Mets game today, and it's a very ca- more casual environment in Anaheim. Mm. Uh, a little less intense, a little more relaxing. Uh, kind of oh, place. Oh, not like the like, you don't have the crazy hardcores and stuff like that. Yeah, not as much. And um, okay. you know, their stadiums all right, but they have a lot better food choices. It's way less packed. The parking is a third of the price, oh, and it's awesome. way closer to the stadium. Like Dodger Stadium is really interesting. It's a beautiful stadium, beautiful backdrop. But you go up; it's up on top of a hill in a ravine, in Chavez Ravine. So that there, it has an absolutely massive parking lot mm. so it could take you 10 minutes to get to the stadium walking from your car usually wow. does and it's like 30 bucks to park at dodger stadium where at you know angel stadium it's 10 bucks and i was took me only five minutes or less to get into the stadium from there so you know there's a little comparison there and i haven't been we went to an angel game a couple years ago when my wife's uh when my mother-in-law was in town to go see otani uh, a couple years ago, so I, I, you know, I hadn't been there since I was a little kid before they remodeled the stadium. But uh, yeah, long story short, had a good time. Mets won, and actually they won tonight too. So they took you, two you out seen of any, that series. You seen any other baseball in California? I have been to yeah, I've been to San Diego when they had their old stadium, when they had their new stadium. Been to that, San Francisco. That new stadium in San Diego is beautiful, dude. Yeah, like, it's really that, cool. That stadium is it? It's like part of the downtown right like like th- yes didn't they it's build right it in the middle of downtown building? yeah there it, it's in the middle of downtown san diego so uh you know it's down by the it, there was really no it really revitalized downtown san diego usually you don't really wouldn't go down to downtown san diego before they built that stadium mm-hmm. um yeah, it's beautiful yeah i've been to san francisco as well did you go to candlestick uh, park no, I haven't okay. been. I went to just the I don't know what it's called these the AT and T park or whatever. Oh, it was yeah. like Minute Maid Park and what you know they switched. That's the name. in Houston, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm this sorry. One, okay, yeah. AT and T. This one's AT and T Park, I think. Now, I th- yeah, it's that's that's an that's probably the coolest stadium I've been to because it's right on the the ocean with the big Coke um, bottle, right? Is is that? Am, yeah. am I getting it mixed up? Yeah. Okay. It's you been about like fifteen hit, years. You can hit fucking there. balls right out into the water. Yes, in right in right field, and yeah. I've been to Seattle. Seattle's got a cool. You go stadium. see their big dome back in the day, or I mean, do you remember when they no, had no, that? No, no, no. It was Safeco Field. Safeco. So I, when I was young, now. we drove right by the big, big, huge dome back. The in King the day. Dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Where the tiles would fall during the game or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and Ken Griffey Jr. was there. So, uh, well, there you go. There's a there's a little bit of a baseball talk. And I've been to Coors Field. Fans. I went to Coors Field when I lived in Colorado that year. Coors Field's pretty cool, man. I I don't know how the other stadiums yeah, are, but really nice. The yeah. one thing I noticed about Coors Field is like, uh, maybe other stadiums are like this, but like uh, the, the the ground level is like the top level of Coors Field. So when you walk in, you can see that that it actually goes down into the ground. It's I don't like know if bowl. that's how. Yeah. It's like a no, bowl, not, like no, that's it's not, shocking. Not, you, 
that's um, usually that's how like arenas, uh, you know, basketball, hockey arenas are built. But um, yeah. Coors is a beautiful field, and I, I was, you know, this is Jesus. I'm going to age myself here. About 27, 28 years ago. That's about <laughs> when I went. <laughs> that I, I lived like... in Boulder, Colorado in 1994 or whatever. That's when I went. And um, it, it was there the first stadium teams. they built. It was a stadium they built as like a throwback. Like it was designed to be like a throwback mm. style um, design and stuff. And um, I, Yeah, it's really it was a nice place. I got to see the Braves play. That was awesome. Uh, okay. Parking was kind of like Dodgers where you park so far away, dude, and you like park it. You're parking like in a different part of the city almost, dude. Then you have to walk through like neighborhoods and stuff to get to yeah. the Yeah, well, Dodger stadium. stadium, you just walk through the parking lot up in the hill. So you're not anywhere near any, you know, the, they just own massive uh, land, Dodger Stadium up there. So um, Yeah, the, the, the Braves games, you know, their stadium is not like as huge, at least from what I remember, but it was a great day of baseball and, you know, you know what I mean. And then I step into the one in Arlington as well, the Rangers. So Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I mean, that I, was a I, huge I, one. The, I think since the Braves have had a new stadium for about two or three years. Oh, they've, they've had, had a new a, one. Okay. Which is kind of blows me away how ridiculous that is because they built that stadium for the Olympics and now they had to oh, build yeah. a new stadium 25 years later. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> but that I, I hate the Atlanta Braves and everything they stand for. So um, that's just par for the course. Hey, you're a Mets fan. You hate the Phillies. Oh, you hate the I Braves. See. You hate the Nationals. Okay. You know, that's, yeah. that's the way it goes. So, you, you get used to it. Well, and the Marlins. Yeah. Tell tell me, what, do you hate so Satoshi Kojima? No, but I did see. Did he do something in Noah? We oh, see, this is how we're gonna open with wrestling. We're gonna talk about freaking <laughs> Kojima. No, like nothing else has happened. Well, like like John said though, usually we, um, you know, uh, we'll do our little topic and then we'll cover some current event stuff at the end. But this week it was just kind of, you know, you know, we know we we've, we've kind of established on the show like New Japan is our first love for wrestling. So anytime something big happens there. Um, you know, we're going to want to put that up front because we do what we want on this show, right? Yeah, so and, and, and also, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes it's fun to take the news in a different order than usual, you know? So we yeah. got plenty of New Japan to talk about. Um, I have not seen Dominion. I wanted to do a whole show on Dominion, but I didn't get the chance to watch it. Justin's seen most of it. So we'll talk about that. And as far as Kojima, so he won the GHC title. He won the heavyweight title in Noah. Oh, wow. And that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's a top guy there, which Noah has been known for pushing older guys. You know, they, they did yeah. Muda, Muda. And so this, uh, he beat Go Shizaki. Um, I'm sure it was a good match, especially with their style. And what, what is it? So he, he's the fourth person in history to hold the GHC, IWGP, and Triple Crown All Japan titles. So he joins oh. Yoshiro Takeyama, Kensuke Sasaki, and Keiji Muto. Interesting. Kensuke Sasaki is who we know as, um, what do you call it? He did the stuff with Bret Hart. Hakushi? Uh, no, that's Jinbei. Jinbei Sasaki, I think. Hakushi. Uh, let me look. Yeah. Because I could be wrong. Because Haku- Hakushi I, was... I, 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 love, I love Jinsei. Jinsei Shinzaki. No, Kensuke... Kensuke uh, I, okay, hang on. Maybe I could... I, I probably sound stupid that I don't have all this right. Kensuke... Kensuke... No, no. No, that's Kensuke Shinzaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... Ken, the big, huge, muscled guy is Kensuke Sasaki. Big, muscled okay. dude from New Japan. So we'll just say, not Hakushi, basically. Not, not Hakushi. I always remember Hakushi as Jinsei Shinzaki. He's had a couple f- names. Uh, well, anyway, uh, that, that that's a uh, that's a big accomplishment for Kojima. Good for him, man. And uh, you know, I know like him joining Noah was kind of an interesting thing that happened, and maybe this was foreshadowed a little bit as happening. But do you know like what the deal is with him in New Japan? Is he like no longer? Uh, on the New Japan roster is you no, know what's he, going on with that? He just wrestled uh, at Hyper Battle recently. Well, I think that was like he's three months taking, ago, right? I think he's just uh, like, dude. Uh, you know, like they are trying to open their Forbidden Doors a little bit. That, you know, they had true, Noah guys true. in, and also like 
some dudes like True. uh even though Suzuki has not been like a full time New Japan employee, like he's always wrestling in other places and they let him. And you know, I think probably like the the booker, uh Nosawa Rongai for, for GH or for Noah is probably just like, dude, I'll give this old dude a championship too. Come on over. Yeah, and I, I bet you that's an easy thing, you know, especially someone like Kojima just tells New Japan, Hey man, they're gonna you know, give me a run. <laughs> what are you guys gonna do with me? And they're like, Yeah, go ahead, you know. Yeah, plus um, I mean, dude, you know. uh his style fits perfectly into Noah. You know, he's a hard hitting, you know, kind of King's pretty- Road style. Yeah, a lot, a lot of brutal chops, and he can probably dial that up, you know, a notch when he right. goes to Noah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's perfect. And he can still take it, too, and give it, so. Yeah, he still goes, man. He's a, you know, you could probably, dude, you could probably push him as a main dude in New Japan still, and he could probably still go. I, they don't because no, he's I old, mean, but. The stuff he was doing with Osprey and, you know, those last few matches that he was having with Osprey. The first time that Juice Robinson got hurt, we'll talk about that a yeah. little bit later. Um, and this isn't even technically an injury, though. It was just like a, a medical emergency, right? It wasn't like he... You can't really do anything to induce appendicitis. It just happens, right? So oh. this wasn't even an injury. Yeah, I don't even know about all that right now. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that wow. in a minute. That, that, that came out a few days ago. He had No, I heard that he didn't he, want to wrestle. Or he didn't want to go back to Japan, right? No, well, no, I don't think anything about that. So they but basically, the title of him. They well, no, he just had appendic uh, appendix surgery. Hmm. So probably within the week, he had appendicitis, and then he had you know, they just removed his appendix, and I don't think that's. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not a long term injury, but. Um, I don't understand why they couldn't just let those guys wrestle to see who wrestles him at the next thing. But, um, you know, he's probably out a month or something. I don't know what the recovery for appendicitis is and how it differs from, like, I don't know, like a hernia. Uh, probably a quick outpatient procedure. Or, I don't know. Probably had to keep in the hospital because when your appendix bursts, that's what, like a seriously life-threatening thing. Yeah. If you don't get to the hospital soon enough, and that's what happens. So, And I don't think that's anything that, you know, technically is just a medical emergency. It wasn't like he... An injury. I don't think you can really necessarily have to, um, you know, have something happen to you or injure yourself, or that's the result. Yeah. Well, they, so. he did have to drop the title because of it. So I mean, yeah, he did. Yeah, there must have been something with that. But anyway, hey man, hope Juice is on the mend and he's going to be back soon because the hard, really interested hard to see rock, what he does with the Rock. What's his name? The, the rock Hard Rock, rock Cock. Rock Hard Juice. Rock Robinson. Hard. And, okay. Yeah. And uh, he gave a little promo thing that was pretty good about like I guess everything's rock hard but my appendix. <laughs> and he's like, you can't you can't have a title match without the champion, you dummies, like kind of thing. He gave a nice little promo. He's you know. Did he give a little iPhone about. promo like a cameo? Yeah, it was okay. really good though. Like, hey, one of the better promos in the business is Juice Robinson. And ironically, a lot of these guys in New Japan are damn good promos. It yeah. seems like uh, a lot of good talkers in New Japan. Oh yeah. Um, which is, uh, you know, a lot of English-speaking, really good talkers in New Japan. Shit, and a lot it, of, it's kind of interesting how it works out that way because I don't think that's necessarily um, something they look for when they're getting a foreign talent over necessarily. I don't um, know if they so look for cool. it, but the person that's a good it's talker is going to rise to the top, dude. I mean, oh yeah, the, the best, the some of the best talkers are some of the best wrestlers in New Japan, including Tanahashi and Okada. They all can talk. Maybe no, Okada, no, no, no. I'm not. talking about with the foreign wrestlers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, that for, is interesting. For, for, I think that's the when they're looking for foreign wrestlers. I don't necessarily they think they need a guy with a great promo. Um, yeah, that's probably right. They I don't mean, need it, but that I'm just saying that for. For something where, um, you know, a lot of being foreign wrestlers, almost every guy that's kind of the forefront that's foreign is pretty damn good at promo. And, you know, it's that it's that improv style that you have to learn to do New Japan because they ain't handing you no script. They might tell you, like, hey, call this dude out. That's it, right? And that's probably what makes it better. And a lot of them, oh, yeah, that, yeah. they can use, ca- you know, the casual foul language. They can talk more like themselves. More natural. Yeah. So when you see J- you see Jay White's promo um, at the at the uh, press conference thing, 
right at the podium or what not the podium but you know what i'm talking about he is just so damn good yeah you know he's he's a guy where his promos and his wrestling are just so like fluid together yeah yeah zach saber you know? has improved massively on promos over the years now he's like i can can i really think that guy really can talk and he has this character he's made that is incredible um yeah a lot of those guys you know and it's funny because like hangman wasn't really known for a talker back in the day that's something he developed through new japan and True. aew yeah but you're right i mean kenny omega was never a great promo why he's given great no. promos but like i'm just talking about the the current construction of the roster oh, okay kenny, K- kenny kenny omega is a perfect example of someone really like you know what the guy is incredible in the ring is not a great promo Japan's a good place for him to go because he's yeah. not going to have to put so much emphasis on his his speed. Well, and in general, promos aren't as huge of a part. Um, Unless you're the winner of, and the heavyweight champion, then it starts to become a much bigger deal. But yeah, right, and all that other stuff that you know I'm talking about. The, 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 well, that kind of came on when the show went off the air uh, with uh, Jay White, yeah, um, his press conference. But all the other stuff you have to go look for, like. Uh, you know, uh, Zack Saber Jr. called out Brian Danielson, and I had to find it on Twitter. It wasn't ever, you know, because it was a post match uh, comment, right? It, it, none of that stuff happens during the live broadcast. Like that kind of stuff would be on. Um, see, that's the thing. I always kind of wonder because if it was WWE style, those promos would be in the show. So instead of just, well, that's why in New Japan they get that mid- matches in and out of the ring really, really quick. But if they would just add another couple minutes to the end, they could get those post, uh, you know, press conference things, promos in, in the shows if they wanted to, I guess. Yeah. But that's just not the format that they use. So whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like they did finally put that on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> finally. Right. With, uh, with uh, Zack Sabre. Yeah. Wow. They yeah, got a really whole good. new background card for their uh, ads behind them. They have a whole different oh. format, I just noticed. Uh, that's weird. It's it's like squares on a grid instead of there. Anyways, that's not anything anyone would care about except us. But uh, well, I I all I care about is I'm getting a freaking Sony PlayStation app already. It's goddamn. Too that's long. never gonna happen, dude. Let's Why even... wouldn't that happen? Because they don't give a fuck. New Japan doesn't know, care about getting it, more customers. They have it on goddamn Roku and Fire. Like it's only, I mean, cut and paste, dude. They got it on. on. They got a channel or a TV show on Roku and pretended like like it was a real TV show. No motherfuckers. <laughs> That's, TV no deal. one's watching yeah. Roku. Well, they're, they're, well, they got back on AXS. They did. Least, uh, so they did, something. and they've been had the worst ratings they've ever had on this station. Sadly. No one's watching it. Right. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's really hard to compare the peak of it. Even though I think oh, in a true. year or two, in a year or two, I think it could, it could get pretty damn close. Yeah. But I don't think we'll ever see that type of popularity again. I mean, they were. I could. I. You could go to the local mall and get a Bullet Club shirt. Oh, dude! Never, like it, never it, say it, never, bro. They could get that. Well, popularity. I know, but I, I'm like that's that's really high expectations. I mean, I don't think we'll. I mean, there's probably still some at Hot Topic, <laughs> but. Yeah, I it was it was pretty mind blowing. You got to admit that like you could go to the local mall and get a freaking Bullet Club or a Okada shirt. Like, that that, was, that is pretty interesting. You can still do that. They have AEW shirts at Hot Topic, but I mean, obviously, right? But I'm not talking particularly like about New Japan. To. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking zero in on New Japan and that Bullet Club shirt, which was just absolutely on fire. It was called the Bone you know. Soldier shirt. What did they say? Like. They, which is weird. It's called the Bone Soldier shirt because it's not the Bone Soldier. You know what I mean? Like, but that was what it was called. Like the original Bullet that was Club what it, shirt. Yeah. And they said, and they just ended up using the name for it. Yeah. It's like CM Punk shirt and the Bullet Club uh, Bone Soldier shirt. Two best selling shirts ever on uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. Makes sense. Pretty incredible. I have Pretty one. Pretty incredible. You got one, right? A Bullet Club? Yeah. I have a. Uh, <laughs> USA colors. Oh, one. those ones are cool, dude. I want to. You yeah. know what I'd like to get is the Robbie Eagles Bullet Club shirt, the Sniper Club. I bet you. I have. I have the um, Robbie Eagles. No, I don't have Robbie Eagles. Excuse me. I have the um, Jay White one. Oh, Switchblade cool. Club or whatever. Yeah, I used to have a Villain Club one, but that got donated. Villain. I have. Oh, okay. Yeah, a, a Headbanger Club would be a cool one too. I have a couple of the Young Bucks ones, like the gold lettering, yeah. and then I have... 
So that's, I that's think the I cool have a Kenny Omega one too. That's part of what I love about the Bullet Club shirt. Like each wrestler has their own Bullet Club shirt, <laughs> so it's like collect them all. You got your Rogue General Bullet Club shirt, you know? Yeah. Your freaking yeah, Kenta Chase Bullet Owens, Club shirt, Crown Jewel. Yeah, I have a Kenta one too. I have the I have the um the Go to Sleep Club, which that's GTA, actually one of my yeah, favorite ones. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let me let me just say this. So we talk about Danielson and. Uh, Zack Saber Jr. Um, it looks like this is official now because they put it on New Japan World. At first, you know, Meltzer wasn't sure. It's like he was like they would should not promote this match if it's not going to happen. That'd be fucked up. Um, yeah, just, it, yeah. As a note here, Danielson and Zack Saber are the only two wrestlers since 2004 to win the Brian Danielson Best Technical Wrestler Award in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. So for almost 20 years, only these two guys. Uh, from 2005 to 2013, Brian Danielson won it, and then from 2016 until 2020, uh, or two Zach Saber, Zach Saber, but then Danielson just won it recently. So it's like, God, dude, these this is a uh, this is gonna be a huge, huge match, dude. And I, I'm pretty sure these guys probably have matched up somewhere before his. They did once know. before Zach Saber was super over. This is gonna be amazing. I mean. This card is coming together, and it looks like we are going to get a handful. I doubted of you. These matches. I doubted you, Justin. And you know, just for our list, new listeners, is my thing was I was really pessimistic, and I was telling Justin, "No, it's going to be all tag matches." And he was saying, "They can't do that. They got to give us the good shit." And yeah, I said, "Any no. pay per view buys, man." Looks like that's what we're it's getting. Not just, yeah, Okada. I mean, we're, it looks like we're we're gonna get Okada. Uh, well, in some form or fashion, I don't know. Not sure what they're gonna do with Jay White yet. Um, but he he has been oh, calling out Hangman true. Page. So maybe it's a triple threat with those three, which would be fine with me, I guess. Um, yeah. It would be a little interesting. Um, you're probably gonna have Will Osprey and Juice Robinson and, or some kind of U.S. title match. Mm-hmm. We know we're having Tanahashi and Moxley. Which in Finally. a way, which in a way, it, right? Because I, I mean, I was excited to see, see CM Punk and Tanahashi because I think they would have really played off oh, each other been well. Great. But um, this actual match has a little more storyline to it, a anyway. Little more right? Stor- little more storyline. I mean, being that Moxley's been a New Japan guy for years now, and uh, just you know, he hasn't wrestled Tanahashi. It's just, yeah, it's like something we've waited on. They planned on doing it before. It never happened. Um, so this is two of the best guys in the business right now, uh, potentially in their prime slash a little past it. Um, going at it. It's awesome. I'm so, you know, I'm so I've got my Tanahashi shirt on right now. Right. <laughs> nice. I thought that was um, a John Cena shirt. I'm not going to lie. No, 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 no. You know, that's why I wanted to get it, because they have the phrases. There was one white. I'm not good with white shirts. And the white one said, um, like, really random phrases, like, uh, never mind, or something (laughs) like that, which is great. Like, it was a Nirvana shirt or something, and it was, like, gray. And the other one said something else, but I just got the never give up because it was a darker color. Whatever. Because I'm a wrestling fan. I'm a chubby wrestling fan, so we need black, dark colored shirts. Uh, Um, Yeah. So happy for Tanahashi. I know I've said this before, but like, I was really happy when he beat Kenny at Wrestle Kingdom a couple years ago, because I kind of felt like as I was watching New Japan, you know, when we, when we both of us first started, Tana was a little bit starting to his decline a little bit, or at least we thought. Um, and you had guys like Kenny Omega and you know Okada and Naito and Ibushi they were really the ones kind of that were the higher ups right Mm -hmm. and Tanahashi looked like right as it was gaining all this popularity in North America that you know maybe Tana was for carrying that company for so many years before right Um, and being like maybe the only thing worth watching in those zeros and stuff Um, and you're like oh that's too bad that he missed that peak you know it's like when your favorite player retires and then the team wins the championship the next year, right? Yeah. But you know what? He's got a lot of moments out of this. Um, he did beat Kenny at Wrestle Kingdom during that kind of peak era of popularity. He won the G1. He won the G1. Um, he had that U.S. title moment in front of the Coliseum, and now he's getting this moment. So yeah, super happy that Tanahashi is really stretching out this kind of last part of his career and still looking great while doing it and just being able to like get himself 
uh, you know, up for these matches. Like when you see him sometimes and the way he walks and limping and still looks great, but the dude can get in shape real quick and seems to be able to, you know, put in a lot of hard work at the gym when he needs to, to get into shape for a big match. And I'm just really happy he's getting those moments right now. He's superhuman, dude. Like the guy, it's funny because we talk about like being at the end of his career and all that stuff or near the end or near, you know, he could keep going till he's 60 in theory, but you know, obviously he's getting up there and it's funny because like you, we've been talking about that for years. I mean, when I first watched him, he had did win the IWGP championship against Okada, but he was still kind of like the next year was Okada's win. And it's just funny because we talk, oh yeah, he's really in, in the end of his career yet. The dude just keeps fucking wrestling bangers like nuts. Just keeps going. Uh, just, and he's still one of the greatest, you know, in-ring performers I've ever seen in terms of storytelling, selling, you know, really just getting the best out of his opponents. There might not yeah. be anyone better than... Uh, pote- uh, pro- 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 probably the best baby face in wrestling right now. I was just going to say the best pure baby face in wrestling, just like one of the most unhateable guys. And then the of guy. course, <laughs> he he can be a heel at times when I've seen it, and it's it's pretty good work too. So yeah, and I Although guess Cody's a fair comparison there, is to, uh, Cody as being a top with, baby face. He said he's going well, in yeah. that direction. But he'll I mean, never wrestle like uh, Tanahashi. And I, I was saying from the get what get what we could talk about Cody a little bit too with that, you know, torn pack. Wow. At least but, we're not um, talking about MJF. God, now, like God, we <laughs> feel like we really talked about that way too much, and I, we dissected was that enough. This shit was so yeah. annoying. Thank God we're dissected past that enough. phase. Uh, do you want to really now. quickly... But we still got the G1 to talk about, too. We so. do. Uh, well, we're going to go yeah. over Dominion and the G1 and Let's some go. other stuff. But real quick, you want to talk about the Cody match? You seem to oh, really enjoy match. it. No, I thought it was a really good match. I mean, I'm not saying... I'm just saying that, uh, you know, him, Seth is so good. You know, if there's one guy I could see for WWE that would be great in the G1, I would pick Seth in a second. I just think his style and everything... Um, yeah, he's incredible. Not the greatest promo in the world, all that stuff, but he's a, he is just a hell of an in-ring wrestler and a great heel. Um, that's just a really good match. And, you know, Cody has his, his... He has character hasn't changed at all since you know, AEW. There's been no tweaks to it whatsoever. It's just a way better audience. Yeah, it, that, right? that's true. The audience cheers him now, and uh, instead it, of yelling at him and audience. booing his ass and telling him to go home... And he does it, the exact it's, same it's, thing. Because I think the AEW audience... I don't know how I can explain this properly, but the patriotic red, white, and blue stuff kind of goes over better with the WWE fans yeah. than the AEW fans, who are, who are a little more, like, millennial-ish, like, kind of... They're more uh, like smart fans, dude. Yeah, probably, you know, a little bit to the left side of the aisle-ish type. I don't know. Like, it just seems that way that the Cody shtick seems old to them. And I knew when he went back to WWE, like, I just say, like, he's it's because that character is going to work way better over there. And we were right. You know what? Someone told me that I thought was, like, a good analysis. Obviously, we could never prove if it's true or not. But uh, uh, one idea was that WWE fans, like, all the angry wwe fans that would boo the good guys and stuff and a lot of that stuff a lot of those people have switched to aew now like and now the who's left are the actual wwe fans that lit because you know wwe fans have been very normal the last year or two you know whereas back in the day i feel like there was a lot more bs from the fans throwing beach balls around and uh (laughs) you know just what chance constantly and now a lot of those assholes have moved to AEW and they do their one two sweet and that annoying shit right so uh yeah i i think the wwe fan also um they maybe they didn't really uh they they were you know that sometimes they like a comeback and um seeing cody rhodes come back felt kind of exciting to them 
too. Yeah, because you know, yeah, because like a newness to him in in the know? competition between them and AEW. This is the first big dub that they've had. I mean, obviously they beat their ass in the ratings every week on Raw, but you know what I mean. Like politically, it's a huge dub yeah. for them to get Cody back. So it's exciting if you're a WWE fan. Um, I thought the match. I think it was spoiled, dude, because I think that I should have watched it live. And it would have been way, way more exciting. Right. I think watching yeah. it taped all, and hearing what people talk about it made my expectations way, way too high. And I had to. Re- I can see that. I, I had yeah. to realize like this was not an athletic match at all. Even though Cody took crazy damage, that was nuts. Like some of the spots they did pushing up against his uh, chest. That that was like why. But uh, you know, it wasn't. There was no like falcon arrows and and. Uh, What's it called? Like Phoenix splashes, nothing like that. There you was, know, there was some top rope stuff, but definitely not to the degree. It was a hell in the cell match, yeah. and I do think they had some limitations. But as in terms of like, I went into it with low expectations watching it. I saw Cody's bruise, and I'm like, oh mm. my god, is he really out there right now? That was and so that terrible. Kind of, um, kind of, you know, I will say this. I think with a when you when you tear your pec. Of course, I'm not like a doctor or anything, but when you tear your pec, the reason why he kind of could go out there and do that is because you can't make it any worse. I've heard people say that, but why not, though? So, why can't you make it worse? You could tear the other pec off, bro. It's just a matter of how much pain you can deal with. I guess you could injure something else in when you're compensating for that side or whatever, but I'm sure they were probably pretty careful you with it. You think Cody popped a um, couple Percocet before he went out there? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Although I, I, I would have rubbed Ben Gay on it or something yeah, to something numb it. to numb it. Yeah, and I think he had to. He was doing way too much with that arm, where he had to do something like cortisone. Or I don't even know if, how that would feel if you're. It could have given him a tramadol torn. or something. But also, Cody don't seem uh, like the type of dude to do drugs before a match. But when I think your muscles completely torn, the last thing you want to do is not feel it because then you're going <laughs> to use. And who knows? I guess that's where the damage can get worse. You would still anyway. feel it. You just wouldn't be upset about it. Really great match. I don't know necessarily why they had to make Cody win. Um, but now he's out till the Royal Rumble, at least, mm-hmm. right? I heard like nine months. He'll probably win that too, dude. So he's the early favorite, I guess. Yeah. And why not? Like, ride his momentum, get him to WrestleMania, and have him beat Roman. Why Fuck not? yeah, I mean, finally. WWE. Yeah. I'm, I'm down with that, brother. I am totally down with that. So uh, let's talk about Dominion real quick. You saw it. Sure. I did not. Yep. It happened uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning. So early this yep. morning, I guess. Um, move uh, past some of these. I'm going to move past some of these tag matches unless anything crazy happened. Uh, what was this Toro Yano versus Doc Gallows? Tell me this wasn't for the AEW tournament, uh, Atlantic tournament. <laughs> Was it like it was I'm just asking. you know? Uh, I didn't really watch too much of it to be honest with you because I was probably wrestle? that was when I was probably they did, but why? That was probably one of the matches where I was kind of falling asleep and stuff a little bit. I w- l- let me here read this to you. Yano followed I up saw with a beard Yano. yank, but was met with a big book and a choke bomb. Yeah, I mean th- they've had that kind of thing for years with him and Doc Gallows. You know, the meme is like the gif or whatever gif whatever you call it where you know the face paint scares him runs away kind of thing i think oh they've always had that dynamic of a cartoon kind of dynamic the two anyway, i'm not a big fan of gallows i love his personalities promos and stuff but in the ring he's pretty much he's a stiff right we can be honest he's pretty slow but don't make it seem like i'd yeah. be lying if i said i liked him yeah and, you know, Yano, we've had our discussions, you know, where we both lie on Yano. Um, to me, it's, you know, unless I see these, with those two combined, I'm expecting, like, a freaking Looney Tunes match, right? Okay. You know, people slipping over bananas and, you know, uh, Yano tape, saying tape Candy Graham from Mongo over. and stuff like that yeah. and, you know, that kind of stuff. And yeah. I don't really remember any of that kind of stuff happening in it. So unless, you know, it's going to be Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, then... What's the point? Hey, I'm down with it. Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd. That sounds like an okay match. Um, they should have just done a match like that, you know? <laughs> Candy Graham for Gallows. That would have been pretty great. Uh, great O'Connor and <laughs> Jeff Cobb won- win the championships. 
Yeah, well deserved, and, right? And They're going to have that back, and that's setting something up for Forbidden Door as well. Yeah, them versus FTR, that should be good, right? Absolutely. Is there another team involved? Because I know Rocky Romero came out and attacked them uh, uh -oh. during the match. How about that? Oh, so we during might have Rapungi Vice involved. Yes. At the end. Oh. Um, because I believe uh, Khan and Okab, Cobb on the Khan, whatever you yeah. want to call him, um, they they beat up, uh, you know, Trent uh, pretty good on AEW. Uh. So we had Rocky Romero coming back to get a little revenge. And um, we might have somehow a little triple threat going, which I don't necessarily think is needed. But. Uh, I, I do like kind of the secondary involvement of these teams that are kind of Suedo AEW slash New Japan, and you kind of have a how do I say this inner uh, promotional Did you say tag Suedo? team for Punky Vice. Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't want to say like you have it. You meant Sudo, Suedo, whatever. <laughs> totally different. That's different. Okay, so you're Suedo. Yeah. Yes, yes. And you know what? Rocky needs to be on this show, dude. Let's be honest here. He has to be. If anyone's been the I, bridge I, between any companies, uh, it, Rocky is definitely he, one of them. He, if he's probably the unsung hero of this whole thing happening, he is the um, forbidden door, bro. Yeah, he is. He, well, he's the doorman. He's the doorman. <laughs> Tony Khan's the forbidden. Who you door. give a nice tip at Christmas and uh, is always there to hold it open for you, and you know he knows the guy in Five B. If you yep. need to. You know, talk to him or you know whatever. Or he'll, he'll walk your dog for you. Yeah. When you're on vacation. Yeah. For a little it, extra money. Exactly. Uh, he's you know, he's good that he's way. He's got those really tasty breath mints, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So he he is the he is the man between, and I think uh, you know, there's probably if you look at his phone, there's probably a lot of text and phone calls to Tony Khan. Yeah, uh, and I'd rather and be the doorman than the bathroom attendant attendant because those guys like. <laughs> <laughs> that's just awkward as fuck yeah um, i mean i can never go so I uh, I, yeah i mean they did that on curb your enthusiasm but like even before that i remember in a strip club once i went in there and i just like why are you here um so uh, tanahashi versus goto how was that match it was fine it was a squash match pretty much tana went over and i want to say like 10 minutes or so well they said that um, the match didn't waste your time so it must have been pretty no. quick huh yeah, I mean, I think it was just a matter of who's available. Oh, Goto's off this weekend. Let's get him in for 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, it really seemed... I, I, I mean, it was almost a little unnecessary in a way. Um, it was, yeah. You know, I really think um, if it wasn't for the punk injury that this probably would have involved the United States title in some way with Moxley. Mm. Uh, Moxley would have involved with something with the United States title. Maybe you would have had him and Osprey again, or Juice. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. it could have been something like that. And and uh, you know what I'm thinking is Tony Khan loves tournaments. Like he's kind of obsessed with them. Actually, like everything has to be a tournament to set up this. And he he he's not good at just like making stuff happen. So maybe he just felt like, oh well, we need a tournament over there too. To it's like yeah, he could have just chosen. I him. like it. That's fine. But but I I think he really wants. Well, I think. It created a really good match on Dynamite. I really enjoyed Kyle O'Reilly and John Moxley. That, that was, was actually really pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. And it was cool to see a guy like Kyle O'Reilly get that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of rub. Oh yeah. Um, he deserves it for sure. Would have been funny if we were seeing uh, Kyle O'Reilly versus Tana. No, Hashi. Kyle O'Reilly versus Godo. That would have been like, wow, you guys you really dropped the ball happened? on this booking <laughs> right at the top of the cart. <laughs> I mean, no, don't get no, me wrong. No, 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 like, wrong. Both guys are good, and uh, O'Reilly's real, real yeah. good. But it's just like that's not who the fans wanted. This, yeah, that that was not in anyone's. Uh, okay, give us the three matches you want to <laughs> see at Forbidden Door. And it was not, uh, you know, Goto versus Orange Cassidy or whatever it could have been from the the Battle Royal. Orange Cassidy versus fucking I don't know. Uh, Oh, what's his name? Luchasaurus versus Goto. Or something. I, I was been, thinking like, random Luchasaurus versus Honma. It's like, what? Or or Matt Menard versus, you know, <laughs> oh, Goto. God. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> some mid-carter mid scramble. Uh, speaking of scramble, yeah. we had... The Dan Housen versus Goto. Oh, God, dude. Yeah. Uh, oh. so Dan Housen versus Watto. Um, so we, speaking Ooh. of scramble, we had the, uh, new Dan Housen Yano, give it to me. 
That might work. Hey, did you see the Dan Housen match from a couple weeks ago? He can wrestle, man. Well, he's back, right? He's actually he, pretty he, he good. He sealed up. Yeah, he had that mixed tag. Uh, not mixed tag, but that tag with Hook. It was really good on the card, I thought. Okay. He, he's a pretty good wrestler. I think I've told you this, but like, I'm not a tattoo guy at all, but like, Dan yeah. Housen, Baron Corbin, Alistair Black, Ooh. those are three are the ones with cool tattoos. And actually, Dan Housen has a pretty badass chess piece. Yeah, he's got like this demon. Or yeah, something. have you have you seen? Do you remember Baron Corbin's chest tattoo? It's pretty awesome. I, it was like a bird cage. It's or like something a weird. Chris, I really It's like a it crystal is. with a cage around it with wings coming off. And yeah, so uh, yeah. Do, do, but real. I'll, I'm on board with Alistair Black or Malachi. Um, but I, I you know I'm. He's his Malachi back, Black. His back he's got that, piece is awesome. That demon woman thing, right? Like yeah, the screaming. It's on Japanese screen, style, it Japanese up. style, kind yeah. of. Yeah, it's like some kind of like Mandarin spawn kind of thing. Yeah, but um, yeah, he's got cool ones. Dan Housen, I don't know. I, the demon tattoos make me feel. I'm not a religious guy or anything oh, by any but means. They but they make me feel uncomfortable. Like for trouble. They may, and I feel like you're asking for trouble. No, it looks cool. Face tattoos. I'm not a tattoo face guy tattoos either. are what gets you because like. At least a demon tattoo, you don't, you're not walking around. Now, if you're in Japan, yeah, you're not gonna. That's not gonna fit in well. But now you can't have. Visible you got to go to private there. onsens, private baths. Well, well even, even then, then, like, but th- that you're not gonna go be able to go to uh, you know the hot springs and all that stuff. They don't let anyone. With yeah, what there. I've heard is you have to like foreigners, the guys you know which one. Like, there's like a couple that are privately owned that you can go to, but that's it. You know. Right. Um, well, they're all privately owned. I'm sure there's not like a chain. There's not or like government. Oh, there's no public ones, public bathhouses. No, there are. Oh, you're talking about bathhouses. Yeah. You're talking about tattoo artists. Yeah. Right. The privately owned. Ones. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's why you see nobody on New Japan. With, well, you do. There's some of them do have tattoos. The, the course, random Japanese wrestlers with tattoos kind of crack me up. You're like, oh, you lived in America for too long. Like, like Dick Togo. Um, Zeus, he has tattoos. Yeah, Zeus. Yeah, he's noticed. got like like around his arm. Uh, Zeus from All Japan. I, I think he's made a not to be in All Japan anymore, but he had like big ass tattoos. And uh, some dude from uh, DDT also. Uh, uh, I forgot his name, but he's part of Eruption. Like he looks like he used to be straight up mafia though. Like you're like uh, just his look and his tattoo yeah. and stuff. So, uh, how'd you like the uh, Shingo versus Tai Chi uh, KOPW match, which was ten minute unlimited pinfalls? That was actually pretty cool. Um, they just have really good chemistry. Was that last match good that they had? Like first to thirty? Was that between Shingo? Uh, to be honest with you, I to honestly I didn't see it. Mm. Um, I heard good things about it, but I I did not see it. But okay. I just from what I see from those two, they have really good chemistry. Yeah. Um, with each other, and that you know they have that pure dislike that they have with each other. That it just plays really well, and their styles really blend well. And, yeah. You know. Well, the, the, Tai Chi's pretty awesome. I too. liked the finish awesome. here, at least what was written that it was eleven to ten, and uh, right, it hit the bell. So cool finish yeah. there, and and unique. Very unique. Uh, this is a pretty unique stipulation. I'm, I've never seen matches like this before. So they're doing some cool stuff with the KOPW. Like as long as it's not Judy Bagwell on a pole matches. Like I'm interested in some of this yeah. more unique stuff that they're doing. You know. Yeah, and now that it's kind of off Yano, there's less bullshit involved, and mm-hmm. you got two guys that are kind of going for it. And I think allegedly, uh, you know, I was that's why I was a little surprised that. Um, Tai Chi didn't win yeah. because uh, 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 what's his name? Shingo was talking about making a title belt and all that stuff for it now and Ooh. I was kind of surprised they were going to move off that little trophy you get from the local trophy store. Yeah, dude. Or online, like for your kids' participation. Um, yeah, like at third place. <laughs> yeah, trophy. seriously. Carl Anderson defeated Tama Tonga. So we had a classic New Japan match, a match from years ago, a Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. Obviously, it's not like that anymore. Uh, the writer here, and this is a shout-out. So is it Brian Rose? Uh, this is Chick Friedis, who actually wrote this article for Wrestling Observer. So 
shout out to this person for writing my notes for me because uh, you watched it and mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, he said this match was kind of boring after the first. It was, eight I, I was fading it. Nothing personal, but I was fading in and out a little bit of it. Okay. Um, I know that you know we had Carl Anderson go over. It was you know probably you know there's some bullshit involved. I believe with Gallows and mm. uh, even though uh, Master Heater was out there, <laughs> um, Jado. Okay. Yeah, it but, sounds uh, like some nonsense. Not as bad as, not as bad as some of the, uh, not as bad as the House of Torture stuff, but still. Not as bad as the House of Torture stuff, but you kind of expect that with you know, eh, kind of that traditional kind of bullet club bullshit kind of stuff. But uh, you know, Carl Anderson's a really good wrestler, so I got no problems with him. I'm just not a big fan of Gallows, but Carl Anderson's great. Osprey really versus good, really uh, Sonata, both of them coming off of minor injuries. This might be Sonata's best match I've seen. Have you seen Sonata um, versus Adam had. Page in uh, the G1? Because that match was fucking awesome. Uh, maybe, probably. I don't remember. But uh, this was a really good match. Sonata was great. Osprey yeah. is Osprey's in Osprey. the conversation for being one of the best in the world, if not top three, top four in-ring performers. Yeah, I, I hope uh, that he can go on some kind of run. Because there's always been these obstacles in his way. Every time he goes on a run, The guy had a freaking kidney infection a few weeks ago and had to have surgery or some kind of treatment, well, right? Well, whether it's caused by an act of God or not, or it's random, it's just all I'm saying is I wish the dude would be able to go on a run, you know? And it's been Yeah, he's been a him. little snake bit. Yeah. You know, along with that U.S. title in general. And he won, and they didn't even have a U.S. title to give him there. Uh, the, the description here says this was an action... Heavy action match for a belt in another building. So, yes. Uh, good job, Will Ospreay. I'm sorry, Sonata. Uh, is Sonata shaved clean right now? No no facial hair? I think so, with like bleach blonde hair. Yeah. And the big surprise here, Jay White wins the championship again and ends Okada's reign, and Okada only is champion for a few months. What the fuck? What a match! Did well, that not really a happy? few months, five six months for Okada. Um, that's nothing, though. Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, Kevin yeah. Kelly said it. Where I thought we were heading for another seven hundred and fifty day reign, but uh, you know what? As we were coming down to it, it makes total sense. Um, so, you so can does have this Okada. mean Hangman versus Jay White? I mean, Hangman was calling out Okada. It could be well, Hangman J. Mike. It could be though. Hangman Okada. Huh? He was calling out the IWGP Championship, though. That's yeah. That's why he called out Okada. We'll see. So. I, I bet you we'll find out Wednesday what exactly we're heading towards with that. This um, kind of changes everything. Wouldn't be surprised huh? if, wouldn't be surprised if Jay's already back wouldn't, in the United States. Wouldn't be surprised at all if he attacked Hangman last minute. Um, So tell me this. Did you notice this? I, I'm reading... Uh, White demanded the crowd to cheer, and a lot of people in attendance listened, audibly cheering for the first time in years. He kept encouraging them to, he's like, I want to hear you, I want to hear you, I want to hear you. And there was, I I wouldn't necessarily say it was, you know, to Shapato Okada levels from Secure Genesis in 2017, but it was definitely, yeah. you know, we can hear a little bit. I think it's all there's some of them that did. They still are listening to the rules. I, it wasn't I, 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 this is overwhelmingly crazy. loud, uh, at least from my... I'm watching off laptop speakers, so maybe it, it was bigger than it was. But seems like every um, week someone's it like... There's a little bit of chatter. Every week someone's like, oh, next week is the week when they're going to start cheering again. That shit's starting to get old as fuck, dude. And I don't mean just the it cheering. Is. Don't even... I don't s- want to talk about the cheering, but like uh, Just the tell lies. me when it's going to happen. Like, why people keep it, saying, I, oh, I, it's I, about I, to change? Easy, easy. Like, I don't know if I can say they're lying, because maybe they are hearing from people that it will. But don't tell me anything until it's actually been I know. T- yeah. When that's, I want to hear it is, hey, now. there is cheering yesterday. That's what I want to yes. hear. Or, yeah. Or we are allowed to cheer tonight. That's what I want to yeah. hear. Text I don't want to hear me. it's coming sooner than later, or... Just tell us when it... Just say it's happening. Shit, if um, I was a fan, I'd be kicked out of the, the venue, dude. 
I I would just start cheering. Yeah, I don't know why more fans didn't. Were they going to kick you out during the last promo? I mean, come on. <laughs> I know like, it's like, sir, you need to go home. Let it go. If you're, yeah, just we're going to go. We're on the way out anyway. Let's let it go. But you know, Japanese. Imagine people if are they very, tried to uh, make the baseball fans not be able to cheer, bro. They would. They they. Well, they were they were doing that in Japan for a while, and I think they're okay now. But my wife was telling me that they had to stop a couple of the games. Uh, for you know her hometown team, oh. that was cheering, and they they clack uh, their clackers and the cheer, you know, every single person up to bat. Oh man, it's incredible. Um, they have a song for every player. Yeah, Hanshin Tigers, which is one of the the hardcore fan bases out there. I guess you can they're compare the Red them Sox, to like right a Cubs Red Sox kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, because they're not the t- they're not the Japan. Yomiuri Giants, but they like are right. They're not the Yankees. Uh, it, they're the kind of lovable I've, losers I've kind of thing. Great videos of Hanshin Tigers bars in Osaka, where like the fans go right. watch and they all do that cheering shit in the bar too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to, I've been fortunate enough to be to I think two games. That's yeah, it's that's fun. awesome. A lot that's of fun. Awesome man. Um, you know what else is awesome is the G1 climax, and this is what you wanted yeah. to talk about. Um, sure. Finally, we get announcements. Um, I don't think. I'm just gonna say straight up, this was not this was not exactly what we wanted, but uh, no, this looks good. I would say it's probably a, 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 a you know, I would compare it partially to what the best of the Super Juniors was, right? A step. You have you have a good number of twenty eight wrestlers in four right in four, four blocks. blocks so there's an official I mean, c block now david finley is in sorry i'm getting ahead of myself in d block yeah so you had a lot of new japan strong guys in there um you had your one AEW guy like you had for the best of the super juniors um and probably someone that made sense if you're really thinking about it we kind of came to the conclusion that you weren't maybe going to get a full-time AEW guy to leave AEW television for six weeks to be in well, this, right? It just doesn't make sense to do that, it's right? It's possible, in, in but, hindsight. But, a lot of, but a lot of those guys said they won't do it if there's no cheering in the first place. So. Well, I know, but I also don't think Tony Khan would approve of John Moxley or Brandy, Brian Danielson to be off AEW television for two months. Yeah, perhaps not. So I think that kind of... That makes sense. Um, not this year, or at least, you know, I can't lose, you know, any of my everyday main talent, you know. Yeah. So you do have a lot of first-time guys. You got El Phantasmo in there. Mm-hmm. Whoa, 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 wait, what? He's going heavy. Yeah, you didn't see that. You might, well, I, maybe I, I got a list right the, here. I just the, missed that. Um, so here, here, yeah. we got Okada. We don't have the blocks yet. We don't, don't have think. the blocks, but we got Okada, Tanahashi, Naito, Goto, Tamatanga, Takagi, yep. Chase Owens, um, Bad Luck Fale, Yujiro, sure. sadly, Evil. Okay, and now we got Tom Lawler. Big deal. Awesome. Big deal. Yeah, he's the strong champ. He should be he there. He used to yeah. be the strong champ, but he, he will be there. Is he not anymore? No. Did uh... Fred Rosser beat Oh, him. really? Fred yeah, Rosser won? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, Juice Robinson, Jonah. Jonah. Jonah Rock, yeah, cool, big right? Deal. So we're gonna get we're yeah, gonna get it. Jonah in the G one. This is a dude. This is a big proving for him. This reminds me of Jeff Cobb a couple of years ago. You know, yeah, we're we're gonna really see what he's made of here. And you know, this this type of performance for Jonah is the one where you're gonna get a lot of fans, or you're just not gonna grow. And it's he he has right away. His size is gonna be something the fans are gonna want to cheer for. So this. You know, now but he's going to have to prove it in the ring right away. He's going to have a leg up because of just the uh, Japanese love the big foreign wrestlers, right? Yeah. So yeah. he's got a leg up, but he's going to have to prove it. And this is the be- he's, this is a great opportunity for him. And Jonah is not part of any faction, am I right? Uh, no, he's in um, what's that one with the tag team, the Australian guys? Um, D- TMDK. Wait. I thought that oh oh he, it's a it's a New Japan strong faction huh yeah he well and I think they were kind of the not Aussie Open with, not you know, Aussie Open right not Nazi not, not Aussie Open the yeah, TMDK yeah, okay, with Mikey Nichols and shit like that I, I've heard of him yeah, yeah right okay, okay right 
and it recently Bad Dude Tito as well. Bad Dude, uh, Yoshihashi, Toru Yano for the spoiler, Ishii, Jeff Cobb, awesome, Great Okan, awesome, Will Ospreay, Aaron Hanare, congratulations to my Twitter friend, Aaron Hanare. That is great, good for him. He, he added it. me on Twitter after I said that he was going to be in the G1 this year. Guess what? I was right. Very so I good. wrote him on Twitter and said congrats to him. This is a huge deal for him, too. He wanted this. Yeah. I've heard him talking about it for all year long. I mean, so happy to see him finally get this opportunity. Another guy that really could prove himself this year. Yes, this is a big opportunity for him as well. And uh, a guy that's been through that dojo and stuff like that and definitely has kind of earned that opportunity. And he's in one of the biggest factions in wrestling right now. Mm-hmm. Sonata. Uh, Jay White, who was not in it last year, right? He was not. A lot of those guys weren't. Osprey weren't. Wasn't. Uh, a lot of those guys who were regular oh, yeah. in it. And he'll not. be coming in as champion. So, very exciting there. Um, maybe one of the reasons that uh, Okada lost the championship is now he's very. He's always going to be booked as a, a favorite. You know. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, you know, as we saw with Hiromu with the best of the Super Juniors. Not a bad thing if you have a legend to win a consecutive G1s on their resume. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good to just add to their lineage. By the way, I didn't see any match. I thought maybe at Dominion we would get the junior title match, so that's not happening yet. No, that's the the junior title matches are both going to be at Corrigan uh, during the week of the 20th or whatever. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, they kind of delayed those. There was a little bit of uh, people not enjoying that but uh you know they gotta sell tickets to those shows too you know but, yeah for sure um kenta returns from injury actually he came back more recently he came back at the best of the Super yeah Junior finals he, yeah he came in as kind of a little throw-in thing it doesn't look like he was quite ready to get back mm, yeah. in the ring but now that he's in the g1 he looks like he's yeah he better be ready awesome. god dude he's like you know that's the thing about being in new japan like you really, uh, you, yeah, you do your tour and then you get some time off, but then once a year, it's like, all right, you ready to work your fucking ass off? He had a, a laundry list of just her really bad injuries from that Tanahashi match at Wrestle Kingdom, including, you know, a dislocated hip. I want to say he had a broken nose and a shoulder thing. That's one of the I little, mean, he was really you know, fucked we, up. You see those matches and you find out some dude got injured and you're like, wow, that was random as fuck. That ma this match was one of the rare matches where you're like watching it and you're going, oh, oh he's, he's going to be fucked yeah. up after this match. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when he went off that mm -hmm. ladder and like hit the trash can. Like that looked so bad. The, there was blood everywhere. That was the broken nose and then that really bad table. The, uh, that is, was to not me, a was so iconic look. with the blood uh, on, all over the table, you know? I was just like, wow, this is crazy looking. Yeah. Um, I think that was not a very uh, gimmick table either. <laughs> Those Japanese tables are just made to kill people. Um, El Fantasmo upgrading to heavyweight. So that opens a whole new opportunity of matches. Very exciting for uh, El Fantasmo to see his style, his, uh, you know, high flying style against some of these guys. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I mean, it kind of. Uh you know, calls to, like, the Kenny Omega will Osprey going to heavyweight. Um, yeah. You're going to see maybe some similar style there. Yeah. Maybe somewhere in between those yeah, two. Yeah, and, you know, it, it, he's funny, too, and I've actually ga he's gained great, a lot yeah. of respect for him. So uh, looking forward to him versus Toriano if that happens. That'll that'll actually be fun. The, those guys will, will do something real goofy. Like, he does remind me of Kenny Omega in that sense, too. Like, he goes all in on the comedy stuff when he can. Um Tai Chi? I mean, it's so similar when you think of the parallel. They were both, you know, comedy mid-card cruiserweights or light heavyweights, and then they just took it up to the next level when they went to uh, heavyweight. You know, I will say, though, uh, Kenny was a lot more competitive of a wrestler than uh, yeah, El Fantasmo. Oh, yeah, that's true. He was true. a much better that's wrestler. True. I, I just like... But he they, was they were goofy, similar, but he was you know. goofy and stuff, but, you, but I mean... Yeah it's hard to compare because Kenny is just like next level talent uh but well no, he's in his peak shape he's 
one of the best athletes in 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 pro wrestling. He used to do, dude. Kenny used to do a one armed gut wrench power bomb. Okay, and mm-hmm. I remember like hoping Cody would do that. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, I don't right. think he can do that move. But it was see, so impressive using one arm and actually doing the lift and lifting him up. You're like, I remember he used to do that move. And I was like, that is absolutely incredible. A one-armed gut wrench. But anyways, um, Zack Sabre Jr., great. Tai Chi, great. Yeah. We get Lance Archer mm-hmm. coming back to New Japan. The, the prodigal son has returned. Huge pop from the fans when they announced that. Huge pop. They love him. I love that he wants to keep that relationship alive, and he wants to come back and have some fun in New Japan. So no Carl, no, no, uh, no Doc Gallows in this group, and no Carl Anderson in yeah, this group. Yeah, interesting that no Carl Anderson, because it's rare that someone that holds a title isn't in there. And no Tonga Loa? Tongalo, I know, is hurt. Okay, Tongalo is hurt. Okay, okay. There is an injury with Tongaloa, so maybe he would be in it if he wasn't injured. But Lance Archer makes sense. If you had to pick a logical guy from AEW yeah. to be in, you know, it made sense for it to be him because not only is he huge, uh, the, the the fans love him in New Japan, History. but, you know, he's he's not a guy that you need at every AEW dynamite they're not they don't use them like that so he's the perfect guy uh that could probably maybe draw a few heads oh yeah um from new japan to watch AEW and that really perfect guy probably to to bring over there where they wouldn't be losing a guy that they have at the you know in main event angles and stuff and he would be huge uh, to draw some people mm-hmm. uh, that wa- you know New Japan fans into AEW. I agree. Um, finally, we got David Finley. Now that's exciting because he always would say C block, and that was a whole joke. You know, he was C block. Right. They got to put him in C block, right? <laughs> Why not? Like, and he had a pretty good match. Was it with Will Ospreay or who was this match with Dynamite against this week? Oh God, I don't remember. It wasn't against Rocky Romero, no. No, uh, it was against somebody that beat him. God, why don't I remember? Uh, I don't remember, but... Whatever it was, it was a good match. It was Hangman and Page. He Hang was kind of... Hangman yeah. Page, there you go. It was a good match. And he was kind of working heel in that. And, uh, yeah, at, at one point, those were two guys in New Japan that were probably at the same level, right? Yeah, uh, he was uh, he was kind of a, a little bit like more like a young boy when Paige was kind of beginning, but yes, essentially they were yeah. both like kind of mid slash low carters. So I guess if you compare both their peaks in New Japan, they're very similar. Y- um, yeah, I, I I would I would singles wise at least. Yeah, I would think more like I don't know. Chase Owens kind of fits into that group of people too. Of how they, I would say Finley's a little bit higher because he had some good tag runs. Mm. Uh, That's true. And he had a pretty decent New Japan Cup run a few years ago. But um, I mean, that's what now. I it, it really Hangman Page really getting lost in the shuffle now. As far as uh, AEW, yeah, I think he's a little bit downgraded now. But that's all right. He probably needs some time off anyway. I'm looking forward to him we'll back. I, I love like I, I, I know, not to get on too much side note, but I loved like every one of his matches, championship matches. I thought were great. Oh, they were good. No, he had a really he had a really good run. He really did. Yeah, um, that that was that was good. Um, so that as good as any AEW oh, champion oh, this yeah, far, for I think. sure, for sure. Um, so that was G1 climax four blocks. Uh, so four blocks of seven, seven, four, yeah. And so I'm imagining like block winner of block A will face the winner of block C or whatnot, you know, and then the winner of block B, will, yeah, and then the the finals will uh, have that all finished yeah, off. Yeah, maybe because but then you only have six matches for each wrestler, and then seven, and then eight for a final. So instead of winning eleven matches to win the tournament, of having eleven matches to win the tournament, it's now nine. No so eight. that might be good for the wrestlers too, you know. And unless they take the top two from each block, oh, um, and you have a block final, 
uh, for the top two guys in each block, and then you have those guys advance. So maybe they would they might do it that way. I just realized no Kota Ibushi. Yeah, well, we might never see him again there, dude. Well, he 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 is still with the company. You know about all that. He has his pay docked. Uh, but they did. But he still came out after that and said, "I don't know. Who knows?" They he, did agree to something. Yeah. So. Um, and you know the guy who who got in an argument with him, Ghetto's assistant, has been put somewhere else in the company now. Yeah, he's demoted. I guess that's a common thing in Japan. They never fire anyone. They just I don't know if it's demoted or is a lateral move. Like they just put him somewhere else. I guess if you go from being Ghetto's assistant, then anything's going to be a demotion. If you're unless you're like becoming a vice president. So yeah, that yeah, that I don't even begin to qualify to talk about the new Japan booking. I know, but you know, I was wishing uh, they would send me ten percent of Ibushi's money because here's the thing. It's like he's not gonna get it, right? They're donating oh, it actually to some cause. Oh shit! Not you. Damn it! I was like, yeah, that's a nice little chunk of change there. Um, and then we talked about Brian Danielson and Zack Saber Jr. Cannot wait to talk more about that later. Um, I hope they have a pre-match thing going yeah. on, like a feud that starts. I, I hope they don't just wrestle. I want to see these two guys talk shit to each other. Uh, I haven't seen if Zach's booked on anything like GCW or uh, PC, you know, PWG. You haven't seen uh, him booked on time, anything then? No, because a lot of times you'll see these guys, you know, with these events in the U.S., you'll see that. Oh, oh they're know, booked uh, around that time in other places. Yeah, you'll see them already being booked at, around that time in the U.S. I don't think ZSJ uh, really like, huh. m- m- wrestles much American indie stuff anymore, though. Well, obviously, you know, since the but but even pandemic, in the last like like dudes that Jap- Japanese he was still guy. doing he was still doing PWG here and there. Okay, okay. Um, by the way, I, I want to tell you Maybe. on a side note, I watched a bunch of uh, Lucha a few days ago, and I watched a lot uh-huh. of Bandito. And you know what? Okay. We need to watch more Bandito. Like he. he yeah, where is he's he in these MLW days? right now for some reason? Oh, but uh, right. he, uh, which is not an indictment on MLW because I hear it's pretty decent. But I'm not a know. huge fan. It I've seen. I don't like their production value. I don't like a lot of the the wrestlers that much. But I don't know them that much either. I'm sure if I got to know them. But uh, Bandito is so fucking good, dude. Twenty six years old or what? Twenty seven? Like stupidly young. Is he? I don't know if I've ever seen him in person, but is he probably about... He's a shorter I think guy, he's right? a little shorter. Um, but, God, dude, there there's some matches. These There are some Lucha matches that you've really, like, got to go and watch. Because, like, it, you, you'd, like, for example, there's uh, the Lucha Brothers versus Dragon Lee and Drillistico. Like, dude, that match is incredible. Oh, and good. then I think Bandito and Roosh or something against the Lucha Brothers. Like, just... Dude, well, Roosh has been showing up on AEW now, and yeah. uh, you know what I'd like to see more of is is Dalton Castle. I don't think Dalton Castle has a job right now, brother. <laughs> he was on AEW about a month ago. Oh. He was somebody's like mystery opponent. Yeah, I don't think he has any kind of uh, contract though. So I mean, if they want to do some rant, he's not like you know some of the other talent. I want to see more of him. That's all I'm saying. Hasn't he struggled with injuries forever too? I think he might have, yeah. yeah. Um, he might have some issues, but, yeah, he's a guy I think, uh, you know, probably five, six years ago would have been really good in WWE. I think you've always had a thing for Dalton Castle yeah, as a wrestler. I get that. like, But, you know, you're like the only guy I know. It's like, I'm a Dalton Castle guy. I, I, really? I mean, uh, really? look, out of people I talk to online. He was awesome at PWG. I didn't watch him at PWG, and I think he was good in Ring of Honor years ago, like you were saying. Um, yeah. But I just, heard, you know, I don't feel like he's done the same stuff he did back then, and and uh, I hope that. What, who did you say were his boys in PWG? The Young Bucks? No, no, it was uh, Bobby Fish oh, and Kyle okay. O'Reilly. <laughs> and they they were, were they were like in character. How did that work? They were dressed up like the boys, and then pretty soon you're like, oh my god, that's Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, because I think they were taking on. Uh, 
the Young Bucks and gosh, I don't remember now. So I can't remember who else it was. It wasn't Kevin Steen or anything mm-hmm. like that. Or oh, I just don't remember. Okay. Hmm. Well, you're getting old, John. What can I tell you? Getting shout old. outs. Um. Okay. So, a couple matches that I heard were great uh, this weekend for people to check out. I haven't seen them. Justin hasn't seen them, most likely. But if you guys want to go check out these matches and tell us if they were good, I might try to check them out. You had FTR versus Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards uh, this weekend. So, where was this? Uh, I I don't remember exactly. I don't I don't remember. I'd have to look it up, but they they did have a match. Um and yeah, like I said, I heard it was pretty good. The other one was West Coast Pro, which is in San Francisco, right? Is that Bay Area? Yeah, that would be the I I, West I don't know. Coast Pro. Sure. They did the uh Let's go with uh that. Takeshita versus Mike Bailey and it was supposedly a great match. Yeah, I think any of the indie stuff that has Mike Bailey on one side is going to be good. Yeah, so and that's cool of uh, Konosuke Takeshita having the time of his life out here in America and uh, eating a lot of Cinnabon. Oh God, yeah, it's like, bro, if you want to really be American, you got to eat a lot of Cinnabon, and you're going to gain a fuck ton of weight too. Can I tell you my Cinnabon story and why I don't go to uh, Cinnabon? Because it's gross. Is that enough of a story? Well, this is what made it okay. gross to me. I'm listening. I worked at a Foot Locker. No, no, no. This wasn't when I worked at Foot Locker. I worked at a... When I was working at the newspaper and the summers were light, I got a, I got a second job when I was like 20, 21, 22-ish, mm-hmm. at a uh, little sports store in the mall, right by the food court. Okay. And it wasn't very busy. It wasn't very busy. So a lot of times I'm just doing a lot of people watching. Um, if you ever work at a mall, uh, especially at one of those like kind of shallow yeah. stores, great for people watching, of course, right? So I, I worked right across from the Cinnabon. And there was this woman with a stroller that went to Cinnabon. Mm-hmm. And she bought like, I guess you can get like a dozen Cinnabons in a box. Gross, right? but uh, yeah, that would make sense. Or whatever. So she bought that and then she got an extra one to sit and eat. And I witnessed that whole kind of occurrence, and it was just from that point on. I really did. She do anything wrong? Cinnabon. She just well, I just thought it was crazy that she got like the dozen. Like, picture yourself going to buy a dozen donuts. What if she's a ch- going to a church and then, meeting or something? I I don't think that was occurring, <laughs> but I just for some reason. I was really grossed out by it. I don't. I, I just thought it was an excessive gluttonous activity. I could have been wrong. You're right. There could have been, you know, as I've aged, I've realized there's reasons why people do things that are not just to gross me out or to be gross. But uh, for whatever, at the time in my life, that was a very unsettling mm-hmm. moment that has, <laughs> whenever I think of Cinnabon. It had permanent mental repercussions, Justin. It did. Uh, it I, did. I, I agree with you. I never had any... Tr- uh, post-traumatic Cinnabon stuff happened, but, uh, I mean, the st- I, n- I've, I don't, think, don't think I've ever eaten, been eaten there. PTCB. Yeah. Because it, it does seem like the most gluttonous store like there is, dude. It's it's like nothing there is going to be under, like, 800 calories, you know. You can get your little mini Cinnabon. It, it's just, and I'm not a huge fan of cinnamon buns anyways. So, like, that there's a whole... St- I'm sure they're delicious, and I've had them before. They're good. Yeah. But I just don't make it a point of contention. Do, do you ever stop and think about how, like, the biggest pretty much ice cream salesman in America is Starbucks? Because think about it. They basically sell giant milkshakes, dude. Like, to adults. Oh, that's, of course, that's what they are. Yeah, I'm going to go get a coffee and you come out with a mocha 600, 600, 600 calories, like, all marshmallows yeah. and, like, it's like, hey, uh, hey girl, that, that's not, not coffee. Yeah, if I'm going to have that, I'm just going to go get some ice cream. Uh, yeah, that's my thing, too. Like, I'll just get some ice cream or maybe, like, get just a coffee. Um, I, I, dated, I dated this girl right. that, like, she 
always wanted to buy cakes from the grocery store. And I remember just being like, wait, people actually buy random cakes from the grocery store? <laughs> like, I ain't buying a cake from the grocery store. I never done that before. I don't know. Like, maybe on a birthday party. Oh, well, that's but not really not to it, just like, yeah. oh, we need a cake. It's like, I'm already fat as it is. So maybe I would go get over in Cork and Hall if I went there. Being a big guy. You, that would be a, that. That would be a great opportunity for we, you. Let's work on that, okay? Well, maybe we could set <laughs> the wrestling and offices in uh, in Tokyo. So uh, yeah, that would be a great opportunity for you. You just have would have to get over with the fans and stay over. Yeah, well, I have a translator. I'll have Maria do that for me. So, uh, anyways, y'all, um, we're about. She could be your mouthpiece. Yeah. We're about an hour and 15 in. We're going to get out of here a little early. I'm tired. Uh, Justin gets to stay up late, and that's cool for him. Um, Well, let's not get too crazy here. Well, still, it's better than having a full day of work tomorrow and being all like, I don't want to go to work, you know? Yeah, that's true. So, you get to sleep in? You won't, though, will you? You'll wake up at 5. No, I want to... What I want... What... What I what I have to do tomorrow, I want to get it okay. Over okay, so. okay, I got gotcha. you. So I can enjoy the rest. Oh, of Oh, the my one day, thing so. I wanted to add, I forgot to add this. Let me add this real quick. Is June eighteenth is is the other Triplemania show this year? They're doing three Triplemania shows for like the thirtieth anniversary, and it looks like the headliner is going to be Hardy Boys versus Dragon Lee and Realistico. Where's that? In Mexico. Oh, okay. So we'll cool. see. Uh, we're watching Jeff Hardy on his slow decline to death. Matt doesn't look too good out there either. <laughs> so, And then June 26th, we are having a stardom cage match show. So like all two cage, cage matches? matches. And one of them is going to be a big team cage match. I wonder if, like, you know, even Japanese cages are just a little different. Like, I've seen them set up. So what would be the Japanese way to name Hell in the Cell? Uh, Jingheno. No, no, no. Like the equivalent. Like if it's stardom, it's going to be something kind of flowery. So it would be like what would they, celebration what would they in the incantation. I don't know. Or heaven in. Uh, no, like not not much rhymes with heaven. Yeah, as the rapper, you'd have to let me think about that for for a second. Heaven in an enclosure. I don't know. Uh um. Hmm. They've already done Rage in the Cage, and that's that's too aggressive of a name. At Stardom? <laughs> no, it was a party I went to when I was young. They called it Rage in the Cage. Well, um, dude, we've, you know, I don't think you have to refer to that as that. Uh, beauty in the fruity cage. Anyways, um, yeah, we'll we'll figure that out. Or you guys can write the in the bird cage. Let us like, know and it'll what. be like the movie with Robin Williams, something like that. Great movie. Okay, cage. yeah, we could do that. There's a scene in that movie where Rage Robin Williams fell cage. down. Yeah, Rage in the Bird Cage. That was I like a great it. Movie. Yeah. Well, uh, everyone, that's your homework. Go watch Bird Cage with Robin Williams. Right. Yes. Cool. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, He'll be quizzed up. next week. What is next week? Yeah. Uh, um. I don't know. Father's Day. Well, actually, my birthday is Thursday, but don't tell anyone. All right. I think Justin's losing uh-huh. it. And happy birthday, Justin. I'm Thursday. I'm getting old. Thursday. Yeah. Everyone send him a happy Thanks birthday on 16. Thursday. Um, we'll be back soon. We might we might do an ex- episode next week or something for Father's Day. We'll figure it out. And uh, besides that, thanks for joining us, y'all. Hit us up at Wrestling and Pod at Wrestling and Podcast on Instagram. Okay. Um, anything else, Justin? Yes. I think that's it, man. Cool. Y'all have a great one, and we will see you later. Good night. <laughs>